Um, so my name is Cindy. I'm from University of Wisconsin Madison. Um, so I will be talking about our version of the IDP uh, used for our, our residency. Uh, so I have no disclosures. And we all know that mentorship is really important in medicine. Structured mentoring increases job satisfaction. Starting early to talk about career goals is important in actually achieving career success. And um, mentorship should be available at all points during somebody's training. Um, it's been independently identified as a factor in academic productivity, which is not the only important thing, but um, it's a measurable outcome of mentorship, and it's important in helping um, create other career academicians. Um, unfortunately, most mentorship is organized informally, and so um, at our institution, we're thinking about ways to implement it formally. So, um, specifically for residency, mentorship is important for measuring growth, goal setting, um, allowing someone to assess how they're doing, and then recognizing and preventing burnout, um, as well as helping to mentor underrepresented populations in medicine, women, people of color. Um, and uh, a recent publication by Jeff Brower, who's our former chief, and Dr. Golden um, surveyed recent postgraduate um, residents and asked them what their most important valued factors from their residency were, um, which included quality of clinical training, geographic location, and faculty me mentorship. So I like to think that um, this old man is telling this old, or this apprentice, this will be on your board someday. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay. Um, so I'm going to change gears for a second and talk about the individual development plan, which is a tool that's used in the biological sciences. And it came from the FASIB in 2002 um, and was later adopted for uh, NIH trainees. Uh, some of you may rec uh, recognize it from the MSTP. Um, and originally the objectives were to provide a structured format to allow mentors and mentees to talk about their career goals starting from the beginning of the appointment and um, broaden the notion of successful career outcomes. Not everyone can have a lab when they grow up, um, but success could come in an academic way and a non-academic way. So um, in 2005, Sigma Xi did a survey about how they're doing with these postdoctoral trainings. And the greatest um, amount of structured oversight uh, correlates with how someone feels satisfied with their career. And um, specifically with structure, um, it, implementing a plan at the beginning of the appointment is really important. Uh, so it makes sense that physician trainees would also benefit from these same type of factors. Um, and so Dr. Kimball, who was here earlier, uh, developed the resident version of the IDP and we instituted this in our eight resident program. Uh, we also had an 18 question pre and post test to assess how we're doing with this IDP. And then in the middle, sandwiched in the middle, you have this online self-assessment um, for residents to assess themselves and their skills and goals, um, where they see themselves going, and then um, this serves as a sort of template for discussion. So it's not a substitute for the discussion, but it, it sort of uh, allows both the mentor and the mentee to have a free <coughs> digestion of what they're going to talk about. Okay, so in prepping the I our IDP discussion, um, you ask the resident to rate themselves on their knowledge base, talk about how comfortable they feel about managing patients, and then some other nitty gritty aspects like billing and coding and negotiating insurance and healthcare systems, that all about. And, um, and then other aspects, um, in terms of career and what they want out of their residency. Do they want an academic position? Do they want to have an X number of publications by the end of their residency? And do they want to be part of clinical trial development? And then um, a more open-ended approach to what they want out of their residency. Um, so um, we use this IDP um, for two years, and these are our results. About a third of our residents had not heard of an IDP before this. Um, our residents are confident in the areas of clinical training, but they were showing that they're not as confident in areas of billing, coding, and insurance. Um, and this sort of was able to spur educational initiatives and morning conference about how to handle billing, coding, and insurance. And obviously not at the beginning, but it is important. 
So this, these are our pre and post test analyses. You can see that the red bars are post test analyses, and I'll just highlight a few here. Um, residents expressed a 30% increase in their confidence in their one year plan. Um, they believe that their mentor and their mentee strength is a little bit stronger as a result of the discussion. And uh, they are more attuned to reevaluating how they're doing it during the residency, and they are able to do it on a regular basis. So, in conclusion, you can see that while it's difficult to establish a mentoring program de novo, you can use the RADP as a scaffold um, to visit over and over again as a benchmark. How did, how did your responses this year differ from the ones from last year and two years ago? Um, it can also serve as a way to identify needs in the resident curriculum. Um, you could also identify trainees that you think are at high risk for burning out and present an avenue for intervention. And so we'd like to continue this in our residency and um, try to evaluate how this can help early career radiation oncologists. So I'd like to thank my mentor, Dr. Kimball. Our residents, um, here's a bunch of references. Here's where you can get the RIDP. You can email me. You can memorize this link here. <laughs> um, but it's freely available to anybody who has the link.